pots connected to Operation Condor extended well beyond Latin America, including here in the United States. Peter Cornblow is an expert on all of this. In fact, he wrote a book on it. It's titled The Pinochet File, a Declassified Dossier on Atrocity and Accountability. I asked him about one of those plots here in Washington, D.C. Pinochet grew so confident that he would have U.S. support for whatever atrocity he committed uh, that he sent his agents to murder his top opponent in the United States, Orlando Letelier. Letelier had been uh, a foreign minister in the Allende government. He'd been Allende's ambassador to Washington in 1971 and 72. And he was the leading opponent of the regime and, and the person who really commanded the most stature for the pro-democracy movement outside of Chile. Uh, and the Pinochet, uh, we now know from recently declassified documents, gave the order to his secret police to eliminate Orlando Letelier. Uh, agents of uh, the regime came to Washington, secretly put a bomb under Letelier's car, uh, and um, set it off. Um, he was killed along with an American colleague. Until 9-11, that car bombing was known as the most egregious act of international terrorism ever committed in our nation's capital. How did it all come to an end? The Letelier assassination uh, was so audacious and so outrageous uh, that even the U.S. government had to investigate it and eventually place the blame at Pinochet's doorstep. His top uh, intelligence chieftain, Manuel Contreras, and Contreras' deputy, Pedro Espinosa, were both indicted by a U.S. court here in Washington, D.C. for the car bombing. Uh, one of the agents uh, that, uh, that placed the bomb, a, a Chilean agent who was actually a U.S. citizen, Michael Townley, was expelled from Chile and prosecuted here. Uh, and the reverberations of that really struck the Condor countries. There was a series of other Condor operations after 1976, but basically Condor started to go downhill uh, pretty quickly between 1976 and 1980. We're still seeing disappearances today, and uh, now in Mexico. Uh, do you see parallels? Do you see, uh, I mean, there obviously has to be differences, but what do you see when you, when you hear of these cases? Well, disappearance is a human rights crime unlike no other. Uh, and the disappearance of these 43 students in Mexico is a haunting crime that, that brings attention to the tens of thousands of disappearances that have taken place in Mexico over the last uh, 20 years, particularly in the, in the northern region, particularly in the state of Guerrero. Um, Disappearance is a particular kind of crime. Operation Condor was, however, an international collaborative cross-border system of repression uh, between the Southern Cone military regimes in the 70s up until 1980. Uh, and uh, it was done in, you know, kind of in the name of supposedly fighting militants uh, around the world, but it really was an effort to squash democratic opposition uh, to those military regimes. And, and it has an international component. It has a cross-border component very different than the types of disappearances and human rights atrocities that we are seeing in Mexico and other Latin American countries today. Talk to me about uh, the wounds of something like this. I mean, you're talking about, we're talking 40 years out, that prosecution's still occurring. The wounds and the healing. Talk to me about uh, the lasting impact of something like this. Well, obviously, these are open wounds uh, for the victims and their families. Uh, and that is why you still have trials going on all these years later, because without justice, there really is no closure. Uh, and the process of, these, of justice, the judicial court hearings, actually kind of pushes out into the public domain information that is needed, truths that are needed for the victims and their families. Uh, and without that, there can really be no reconciliation for atrocities of the past. That's why we are waiting for a verdict in Argentina on a major Condor trial, uh, and that will really call attention to the, to the evils of Operation Condor for the future. Peter Kornblow, thank you. You're welcome.